Dennis Prager. Uh, if you hate Israel, you're no friend of the Jews. Ah, yes. I love defending persecuted minorities by associating their existence with a nationality and then saying that you're a bad Jew if you don't support that, eth that ethno state. Let's do it. Imagine a group of people who work to destroy Italy. Because they claim Italy's origins are illegitimate. Imagine further that these people maintain that of all the countries in Wait, first off, I just want to say, destroying Italy because its origins are illegitimate, fucking based. Okay? Can we can we can we open with that? Are we all clear? Are we all pro destruction of Italy? Okay, good. In the world, only Italy doesn't deserve to exist. Hmm. And then imagine that these people vigorously deny that they are anti-Italian. Would you believe them? Hmm. Do we have a false comparison that's being that we're opening up our discussion with? A false comparison? Dishonest advocacy in Prager U? Well, what's this video about? Now substitute Israel for <gasps> Italy, and you'll understand the dishonesty and absurdity of the argument that one could be anti-Zionist, that is against the existence of a Jewish state, but not anti-Semitic. Ah. Hey, uh, uh, uh bibbidi babbidi I just, uh, bombed a Palestinian hospital, eh? Hey! Hey, uh, matzah! <laughs> hey, I'm an, I'm an anarchist, okay? I'm anti-state, like, all the way around. So, um, I mean, I, I'm, like, good no matter what, right? Now, by me just closing the window... Like, I'm good no matter what, right? Because I'm, I'm anti all states. I have my plausible deniability, you know? Let's, let's see. Oh, also, we should be really fucking clear. I don't want to be irresponsible with this. Why is this comparison stupid? A, because usually the people who want to destroy the Israeli state, by destroy they mean remove the Israeli people from that area, are doing so because Israel is an ethno state that is currently engaging in a war of, um, of, of elimination with the Palestinian people. That Israel has only been there for about like 70 years now. And for that reason, because of its relatively small size and the fact that it's currently in operating open air concentration camps for the Palestinian people, that it is, um, that it is uh, uh, more capable of being removed than others are. Italy is A, not currently, to my knowledge, engaged in a genocidal war of oppression with a group of indigenous people in their, uh, in their borders. Um, I assume, let me know if I'm wrong, um, B is significantly larger, and C has been around for a bajillion fucking years. Um, also, D, it's, oh, it's not an ethno state. Uh, that's another one. Um, if I, a non-Italian, go into um, Italy, I can enjoy the same rights and privileges as an Italian citizen if I gain citizenship. Um, and my ethnicity is not a component to my citizenship. So that's uh, just a, just a, smidge of a difference there, you know, some reasons why Italy would not only be easier to, or not Italy, sorry, Israel would not only be easier to remove, um, but also why there are more reasons to remove Israel than there would be other nations. But that is precisely Prager! what anti-Zionists say. They argue that Israel's existence is illegitimate. Mm -hmm. They don't believe this of any other country in the world, no matter how bloody. Wait, yes, we wait. Yes, we do. Again, maybe I'm the wrong person to go about here because a lot of anti-Zionists that I am aware of are anti-state. So if we're anti-state, we're against the existence of all of these states. Just not all of them are engaged in genocidal wars of oppression and apartheid. Its origins. And then they get offended when they're accused of being anti- Why does he have the Joker smile? Are you guys seeing this? Am I fucking, am I hallucinating right now? Have I seen too many fucking meme images? His smile lines are the Joker kind. Yeah. Do you want to know how I got these scars? The intolerant left opened my mouth and stuck a blade in and they- Anti-Semitic. How can they make this argument? First, they change the topic. They say it's unfair to charge those who merely criticize Israel with being anti-Semitic. I think most fair and reasonable people would agree with that sentiment. Criticizing Israel is uh, probably not anti-Semitic, but you'll notice that they already snuck a conclusion in there. That's a little interesting because the premise here is that wanting to destroy the state of Israel specifically makes you an anti-Semite. Whereas I would argue it makes you anti-Israel. 
There are Jews outside of Israel, after all, and most of the people who want to see Israel gone aren't themselves anti-Semitic, at least not in the communities that I run in. So the idea then is that if you could prove sufficiently, if you could prove to a sufficient degree that people are hypocritical in their dislike of Israel, that the only explanation for that hypocrisy or for that bias must be because of anti-Semitism, while leaving out the other examples earlier provided, um, apartheid, genocide, recently formed, uh, you know, massive geopolitical destabilization in the region, fascist. By ignoring all of those other conceivable explanations, the only one which you arrive at then is the anti-Semitism, which is, of course, the goal, because this video is exactly what the right will frequently accuse the left of being. It's essentially race-baiting, though Judaism is not itself a race, it's the same basic premise. You, as a marginalized identity, make an argument about your perceived persecution rather than addressing the actual arguments. But criticism of Israel is fine. Denying Israel's right to exist isn't. Anti-Zionism... What is a state's right to exist? That's a question for the chat. What does a state's right to exist mean? It just kind of means like the people in there have like a border and their own laws, right? But there's a lot of really weird right to exist arguments when it comes to Israel exactly. See, I don't give a fuck about states. What's a state's right? I care about people's rights to exist. What is a state's right? A lot of people's arguments for the existence of Israel are very, very strange. Some 4,000-year-old ethnic precedent stuff that strikes a little bit weirdly close to ethno-nationalism, to my taste. Zionism isn't criticism of Israel. Oh. Anti-Zionism is opposition to Israel's existence. Sure, sometimes. I mean, it can be both. Anti-Zionism can be criticism of Israel. There are anti-Zionists who are in favor of a two-state solution. And anti-Zionists can be criticism of Israel's right to exist. Again, I don't think anything, any state has a right to exist. Zionism is the name of the movement that advocates for the return of Jews to their historic homeland. Yeah, see, that's the weird one right there. See, I don't care about that. Return to your historic homeland. What, because you occupied a piece of land thousands of years ago, that's where you get to go again? There were already people there, called the Palestinians. How would you feel if some moon race of Native Americans came down 3,000 years from now and, um, and set up a settlement in the middle of, like, um, Washington, D.C.? Because they have an ancestral right to exist there. Now, I think that would be fucking radical, personally. But, um, you know, maybe that's because they're from the moon. Over the past 3,000 years, there were only two independent states located in what is called Israel. Both were Jewish states, and invaders destroyed both. No Arab or Muslim or any other country ever existed in that land, which was... Wait, I'm just going to Google Palestine 1930s. Whoa, that's really weird. Wait, is, Denner, is Dennis Prager lying to me? Am I being lied to right now? Wait, who lived here? Was it just empty? Who are these Palestinian... Wikipedia. Palestinian... Palestinian Arabs are an ethno-national group comprising the modern descendants of the people who lived in Palestine continually over the centuries and who today are culturally and linguistically Arab, in large part. That's interesting. What's Palestine? Palestine is a geographic region in Western Asia usually considered to include Israel, the West Bank, Gaza Strip, and in some definitions, parts of Western Jordan. Interesting. So for centuries... Arab people lived in what is now called Israel. Okay, that seems like a strange hole in Dennis Prager's argument, but he could have misspoke there, you know. Only named Palestine by the Romans oh. to remove all memory of the Jewish state they destroyed in the year 70. I, of what relevance is that, even if it is true? 
Well, uh, the Arabs didn't really live there for millennia and centuries because actually it was named that by the Romans? What? Second, anti-Zionists claim they can't be anti-Jewish because Zionism has nothing to do with Judaism. That's equally false. It is the same as saying Italy has nothing to do with being Italian. Judaism I don't think any Zionists or anti-Zionists are claiming that Zionism has nothing to do with Judaism, only that they're not intrinsic to one another. There are non-Zionist Jews and there are non-Jewish Zionists. Nobody says they have nothing to do with one another. That's a ridiculous claim. Zionism has always, always consisted of three components. Do you like that? Wait, 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 really quickly. I want you to really quickly imagine that this video is being made by an ethno-nationalist who is desperate to ascribe intentions and history to Judaism that are not necessarily there. I'm going to pick these apart. If there are any inconsistencies, then this isn't an always. 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 He's really insistent on that Zionist shit. Consisted of three components. God. Except there are non-religious Jews Everyone would agree with this. Everyone, from anti-Zionist to Zionist, Nazi to liberal, everyone agrees there are people who are culturally Jewish who are not religiously Jewish, who are agnostic or atheist. So we're already incorrect on this one. To be fair, it says Judaism, but these people would unquestionably count those amongst the rank of the Judea, would they not? Torah. And Same point to the first one, I suppose. And Israel. Well... Israel hasn't existed for the entirety of the length of time that Jews have existed, and Jews, or at least a small portion of Jews wanting to go back to Israel, is not an argument that Israel is a necessary prerequisite of Judaism as a concept. If Israel isn't part of Judaism, neither is the Bible or God. What the fuck kind of logic is that? Wh what? Christianity always, always has had three things going for it. God, the Bible, and the Pope. If you don't like the Pope, rips paper, then God dies to... What? Third, anti-Zionists claim that Judaism is only a religion, therefore Jews are only members of a religion, not a nation. Okay, well, here's where we get some weird stuff right here. Judaism can be a culture or a religion or an ethnic group, depending on how exactly you're referring to it. But it's true. Judaism is not a nationality. If so, what have Jews been doing for the past fucking 2,000 years? What nationality were they tied to then? To a nation that doesn't exist and won't exist for hundreds or thousands of years? You can't equivocate ethnicity with nationality, nor religion with nationality. This is exactly what Trump did with his recent bill, which is very fucking spooky, where he's trying to redefine Judaism to refer to a nationality. I don't know if you know this, Trump recently passed a bill, executive order if I recall correctly, though I could be wrong on that, um, recently passed a bill um, to... Um, uh, to make it such that uh, Judaism is considered a national a nationality as well, so the Department of Education can withhold funding from protest groups that are criticizing Israel on campus. So Trump made an executive order to withhold free speech to silence protesters by threatening the defunding of um, educational institutions by making it so Judaism is a nationality, which reminds me an awful lot of the laws that Germany passed prior to the Holocaust, which also assigned specific ethnic and national status to Jews. Interesting. It's almost as though distinguishing a group further from the hegemony makes it more and more easy for them to be targeted. But that's okay, because don't worry, folks, Zionists don't actually give a shit about Jews. And we're going to get to that soon. But the Jews are called a nation more than a hundred times in the Bible. And... I'm sorry, is that where we get our fucking political science from? That is why there can be irreligious, secular, and even atheist Jews. Yeah? Because Jews are not only a religion. Wait, I thought Judaism was always... Wait, are so there are Jews who are not part of Judaism? I thought that the God and the Torah was a necessary part of it. 
So wait, if Jews are not only a religion, which implies that God and the Torah are not necessarily a part of their lives, why would Israel need to be a part of their lives too? They're also a people or a nation. There are no atheist Christians because Christianity is only a religion. Interesting. But hey, do you think if we lived in a different type of world where there were fewer Christians and those Christians had a uh, historically persecuted status, that there might be some likelihood that us white folk might be considered culturally Christian or ethnically Christian? Because cultural Christianity is a thing. I'm an atheist, and yet I have a Christmas tree in my house. That's cultural Christianity right there. That's what it is. We don't call it that because we just accept it's part of Americana. That's cultural Christianity right there. There are probably tons of shit a lot of you guys do, despite being atheist or agnostic, that are part of that cultural Christianity. Do you celebrate Easter? Do you have Easter Bunny shit going on? I'm sorry, do you think that because it's been commercialized to hell and back, that means it's not a byproduct of Christian cultural dissemination? No! Of course not! So Christianity can be a culture too, but Dennis Prager over here just fucking said that it is not necessary for one to believe in God or the Torah to be a Jew. So why then does he say that the third component, Israel, is something which is necessarily Jewish? He sets up a dichotomy that he later contradicts because he re because one part of that dichotomy supported his argument in one part of the video, and the second part of the dichotomy supported his argument in a different part of the video. Fourth, the anti-Zionists claim that Israel is illegitimate because it is racist. I don't think anyone has ever claimed that Israel is illegitimate because it is racist only that its racism makes it a worse state. This is the fraudulent charge Israel haters and America haters make. Israel haters and America haters. God, do you love being fucked by neocons? Do you love having your tight fucking boy pussy just pounded open by the r ridiculous level of ethno-nationalism that the neocons are trying to assemble with their Israel-America unity? Um, well, when people say Israel are is racist in spite of their open-air concentration camps, open citizenship bias against Arabs, the fact that they openly and uh, fastidiously discriminate against the Palestinians, when they say it's racist, they're not only anti-Israel, but anti America? Aren't we tired of this? Aren't we fucking done with this? Is this the 1950s? Should this be going? Is this sh fucking black and white on a TV screen between like fucking um like like uh, the CBS and like a uh, old Coke Santa ad where like the 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 Santa delivers like a Coke to like the neighborhood girl and the friendly uh the friendly you know colored boy next door who occasionally paints the fence or something like this is a degree of fucking vintage ass um fake nationalism that actually boils my blood. Dennis Prager doesn't give a fuck about America at all. Dennis Prager's sole political prescription is making sure that the corporations that have been raping America dry for centuries now get as much money and public support as humanly possible. Dennis Prager doesn't give a fuck about America. Dennis, fuck, uh, Dennis Prager doesn't give a fuck about the American people. And he certainly doesn't give a shit about Jews. The only thing he gives a shit about is power and the money that, um, that affords it. That's it. So for Dennis Prager to sit here and claim that someone is anti-American? Anti-American for claiming Israel is racist? I am unquestionably more pro-American than Dennis Prager is. And I fucking hate America. But at least I don't hurt it like he does. Against two of the least racist societies in the world. Damn. Half of Israel's Jews are not even white. What? That's not relevant to this. There are non-white, yeah, Jews. And anyone of any race or ethnicity can become a Jew. Plus one- Hmm. I wonder if there are any cultural or legal barriers to prevent- Hmm, interesting. So one, we're not talking about skin color, we're talking about ethnicity. Two, are you suggesting that you have to be a Jew to be treated well in Israel? Anyone of any race or ethnicity can become a Jew? Well, geez. That's like saying that a state isn't classist. You get treated like a second-class citizen unless you make at least 60000 a year. And anyone can make at least 60000 a year, so obviously it's not classist. One of five Israelis isn't a Jew. And... So, guys, America in the 1820s is racist? Do you know how many blacks there are in America? Yeah, 72% of all Palestinians in Israel have no voting rights. 
the people who were originally there, the, you know, actual indigenous group in that community. Notice how hard he has to pivot there. Uh, 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 well, anyone can be a Jew and some of the Jews are non-white and some of the people there are even non-Jew. Wow. So all people are treated equally, whether or not they're a Jew? Uh, 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 uh America hater. And these Israeli citizens, mostly Arab Muslims, have the same rights as Jewish Israelis. Interesting. 72% uh, of Palestinians in Israel have no voting rights. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder, is Dennis Prager lying? Is Dennis... Oh. Is Dennis Prager lying to us here? Damn. Let's see how long it takes us to find some contradictory information right here. All right, here we go. How Israel marginalizes its Arab citizens. Disaffection prompted the lowest voter turnout in years amongst Arab Israelis. So this is already, um, this is already for uh, Arab citizens right here. Racism in Israel. Damn, a Wikipedia article too. Racism in Israel refers to racism directed against Israeli Arabs by Israeli Jews, intra-Jewish racism between various ethnic divisions. Yeah, there are also Jewish groups in Israel that are discriminated against pretty heavily. Light-skinned Jews in Israel are treated quite a bit better. Hmm. Racism against Arabs on the part of the Israeli state and some Israeli Jews has been identified by critics in personal attitudes, media, education, immigration rights, housing segregation, and social life. Nearly all characterizations have been denied by the state of Israel. The commission set up to explain the October 2000 unrest in many Israeli Arab communities found the state and generations of its government failed in a lack of comprehensive and deep handling of the serious problems created by the existence of a large Arab minority inside the Jewish state. Government handling of the Arab sector has been primarily neglectful and discriminatory. The establishment did not show sufficient sensitivity to the needs of the Arab population and did not take enough action in order to allocate state resources in an equal manner. The state did not do enough or try hard enough to create equality for its Arab citizens or to uproot discriminatory or unjust phenomenon. Fascinating. Interesting. Some critics have described the law of return, which allows all Jews and persons of some Jewish descent to immigrate to Israel as racist, as Palestinian refugees are not eligible for citizenship, which is funny considering they're the people who were actually just kicked out of Israel in their lifetime or one generation removed, or as the law of return for Jews refers to an ancestral birthright which must have uh, taken place thousands of years ago. Religious racism, a boatload of incidences, sports. Who gives a fuck about sports? Ethiopian Jews. Nearly all of the Ethiopian Beta Israel community, a community of black Jews, resides in Israel. Racism has commonly been cited as an explanation for policies and programs that failed to meet expectations. Racism was alleged regarding delays in admitting Ethiopian Jews to Israel under law of return. Religious motivations, racism. When Ethiopians protested that blood donations from their community were thrown out. Ha <laughs> ha! Holy shit! Okay. Do you believe in birthrights? No, of course not. Damn, that's a lot of shit Israel's up to. How Israel marginalizes its Arab citizens. This, what, what do I do, read? What do I read, books? What do you want from me? Hey, listen. It does not take a particularly keen mind to determine that there is in fact racism inside Israel. Forced sterilizations, uh, voter marginalization, lower marginalized turnout, discrimination against dark-skinned Jews, discrimination against Palestinians. Boy, oh boy, the list goes on. All right. So Dennis Prager playing cover for racism. Not the first time he's done this. Not a tremendous surprise to anyone here. As for Israel's control of the West Bank, that has nothing to do with race. Hmm. Israel doesn't control the West Bank because Palestinians are of another race. Hmm but because Palestinians and their Arab allies tried to destroy Israel in 1967 and they lost the war. Palestinians have rejected all- Oh wait, 
then why not just open up the camps and let Palestinians wander Israel freely? Offers to found their own state on five separate occasions since 1947. That's the only reason they don't have a state. And why have they all... This is an enormous lie, by the way. Israel initiated the 1967 war and they were later forced to give up territories because they imperialistically conquered everything around them with American support. Look at these fucking snowflakes, dude. Look at these weasley little liars right here. Still lying with America's help, with Daddy America backing them up. They fucking jumped out and they initiated a conflict. They killed a tremendous number of people and they were later forced to give back the land they stole with their imperialistic war of aggression. Still lying, dude. If there is no issue, then... If Israel won the war and conquered those territories, why are all of the Palestinian people still being kept in open-air concentration camps? Pardon my ignorance, I've never run a country before, but typically, if you conquer a territory, do you not incorporate its citizenry into your nation, or at least into your empire? If that's the case, why keep them as second-class second citizens inside walled borders and constantly shell their cities and people with, um, with military armaments? That's just, a, that's a strange thing to do, right? Like, can you imagine, imagine like, uh, imagine the Romans. If we're going to ascribe this specifically to, um, to, to just like imperialistic conquest and nothing else, we're going to ignore the wheeling and dealing. We're going to ignore the genocide. The fact that Israel, with the aid of other Western countries, forced out hundreds of thousands or even millions of Palestinians from their home, forcing them on a death march to, um, to exit their previously occupied territory. If we're going to ignore all of that, okay? If we're going to ignore the fact that um, the Israeli authorities rejected offers for two-state solutions, which, by the way, the fucking, um, what are they called again? Assad? What's the term again? Come on, the Hamas, thank you, not Assad. They sound similar, kind of. Um, we're going to ignore the fact that Hamas, this terrorist group, is in favor of a two-state solution that Israel repeatedly rejects. Even if we're going by that logic, think about it. If we're talking about conquered territories, we're talking about, um, we're talking about like, imagine the Roman Empire expanding. You conquer an area, you conquer, you know, a territory, right? And then that city is told like, hey, you know, new big boys in town, you know, get used to it. You're paying your taxes to us now. And, uh, yeah, don't cause too much trouble, you know? Maybe rough them up a little bit now and again. Gotta keep them, uh, you know, on their toes. Make sure you don't have any, uh, any freedom fighters in their midst. But for the most part, you incorporate them. What you don't do, typically, is deny them their own statehood, but then also uh, keep them in walled-off concentration camps, shell them and treat them as second-class citizens, um, ensuring that they are a perpetual underclass, incapable of even providing anything useful to your country because you're constantly destroying shipments, preventing um, international aid, and largely preventing the, the area from developing. So you deny them a state, but you also deny them entrance into your state functionally, um, leaving them to rot into perpetuity uh, with, their, um, with, with their aforementioned concentration camps. That's, uh, hmm, why would you do that if not for race? Like, why would you do that if not for race? Like, what other motivation would you have? Like, it's pretty obvious if Israel could, Israel would just genocide the, um, the Palestinian people. Like, if the UN turned away for a second, can we get some truers in chat? Throw your fucking hypers up. How badly do you think Israel wants to just genocide the Palestinian people? If we could all blink for a second and, and, and all those camps were empty all of a sudden, we just turn around, they're like, oh, 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 guess they all, <laughs> guess they all left. Like, fucking yeah. They would do it in a fucking instant because they're not granting them statehood. And they're not letting them have their own territory, but they're not incorporated them. Yeah, Ben Shapiro and other Zionists have literally advocated for the destruction or the complete removal of the Palestinians. Pure Zionists like Dennis Prager over here are open about their desire for genocide. But if it's not about race, why genocide them? Just make them citizens or let them work in your state. Israeli citizens advocating genocide?
Oh, Empire Files. In this situation. I've seen this video. This bitch goes around and asks people, and like, Israeli citizens are just on board with the complete genocide of the Palestinian people. Israel is a deeply fucked up country. Uh, first of all, it's very hard. Marry Arabs. Why do you feel strongly about that? Because Jews is a special nation that God gave it to the Jews, and we don't want Jews to get mixed up with it, together with a different nation. I think... Hmm. Normal country, 14-year-old fucking chubby lad talking about how he doesn't want his God's chosen people getting mixed up with other nations. Hmm. That You can go watch that video. It's like a ton of people. She's just asking them. She's not even leading their questions, too. She's like, yeah, so, you know, how do you feel about the Palestinians? And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I think we, I wish we could genocide them. But that's okay. Normal nation. Always rejected building a Palestinian state? They, Hamas literally supports a two-state solution. Yeah, look, right here. As of 2017, Hamas accepts the Palestinian state with 1967 borders without recognizing the state of Israel, which I think is perfectly fine considering the fact that Hamas represents a group of people which were literally ethnically displaced by an invading force less than a century ago. Yeah, Hamas wants a Palestinian state with the borders that were originally supported by Israel. I imagine that between now and 1967, um, the Palestinian people have probably had their uh, expectations lowered substantially when it comes to a peaceful reconciliation with the Israeli people. Yeah, 100% because they have always been more interested in destroying the Jewish state. Mm -hmm. Finally, I mean, the Jewish state literally invaded their homeland and killed their people and displaced their people and keeps them in concentration camps. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty okay. Hey, guys, uh, I'm an American. Maybe this is my fiery patriotic experiment brewing, but if, you know, China invaded America and then set up a gigantic fucking ethno state of Chinese people in America and then booted all the Americans off to Rhode Island, I would also feel not great about this new China too. As shitty as Israel is, I don't really think you should be talking about Hamas in such a positive light. All I'm saying is that Hamas has reason to hate Israel and that Hamas supports a uh, Palestinian state. I don't think that's talking about them in an unfairly positive light. Hamas are a terrorist group, but they're a fair terrorist group. They exist because of Israel's horrific crimes. The anti-Zionists claim that Israel's origins are illegitimate. Of all what? the world's 200 plus countries, the only country anti-Zionists declare illegitimate is also the only Jewish one. one, one again, once again, I don't know where this is coming at from. I'm a leftist. I don't like any states, but okay. That's pretty much all you need to know about their motives. There you go. See, exactly. Remember earlier what I said? Dennis Prager does the race bait shit where he says, oh, he tries to imagine the hypocrisy. Why do these people only dislike Israel? And then he tosses out and fails to consider all of the other potential explanations, like the fact that Israel is fucking horrible and the fact that Israel just recently colonialized an area and is currently engaging in apartheid with them and then rests on the only. It's the exact same thing that Candace Candace Owens did as well. Here. I'm wrong. Where's that segment where Candace Owens has that segment where she said Hitler did nothing wrong or whatever? And then um and then the guy played it out loud and her first response was you must hate black people or something along those lines. It's it's that. It's that same victim baity race mentality that conservatives engage in all the fucking time. Why, for example, don't they make this claim about Pakistan? In 1947. Nine months before the establishment of Israel, India was partitioned into a Muslim state, Pakistan, and a Hindu state, India. Um, because, oh God, for so many reasons. Uh, a, because it was splitting off from an existing state rather than a foreign nation invading them and colonializing their settlement. Uh, for B, Hindus were an, um, an ex uh, oppressed minority within, in or, sorry, um, Muslims were an oppressed minority within India. And for that reason, there were already calls, long-standing calls for those people who were indigenous to that nation to have their own separate um, legal, uh, you know, jurisdiction. Uh, the context is completely different here. 
unlike Israel, Pakistan had never existed before. We don't, nobody, I don't care about nations precedent to exist. Unlike Israel's founding, which created about 700,000 Jewish refugees from Arab lands and about 700,000 Arab refugees from what became Israel. That, you, wait, that's not, they're not refugees. You can't call them Jewish refugees when you just invaded and set up your own territory and they came to you. They're not refugees. You brought them there. And you don't get to displace new people to make your new people there. Wait, that'd be like, oh yeah, what? You slaughtered the entire fucking state of Texas to move in your nation? Oh yeah, well we displaced about 25 million people, but we brought in about 25 million people too. Really, it's morally neutral. Refugees from what became Israel, the founding of Pakistan created about 7 million Muslim refugees from... Yes, a persecuted minority escaping to the state that they had claimed um, they'd wanted for a very long time. India, and about 7 million Hindu refugees from Pakistan. And, and the context here is so different. Oh, I know that the division of India was done in a terrible, terrible way, but nobody calls for the abolition of Pakistan or India for very different reasons um, than the people who claim for the abolition of Israel or to be anti, uh, to be anti-Zionist. The um, Pakistan-Israel, uh, Pakistan. Um, India divide is so fucking complicated and there's so much more precedent. Long-standing ethnic groups indigenous to that area calling out for representation. Um, British involvement completely fucking with the borders and the way in which um, and the way in which the uh, situation was resolved. Israel was uncritically foreigners coming in invading and displacing hundreds of thousands to create a new state where they were not previously. There is no comparison. And while the highest estimate of Arab deaths in the fighting that took place when Israel was established is 10,000, the number of deaths as a result of Pakistan's creation is around 1 million. Yeah, these are, these have, these are irrelevant, even if these numbers were true, and all these numbers are probably untrue. These, this is literally irrelevant. So why is Israel's legitimacy challenged while Pakistan's isn't? See, look at this whataboutism. There are people who challenge Pakistan's legitimacy. I'm aware of this, but... There's only one answer. Yeah. Israel is the one Jewish state. Of course, not all anti-Zionists hate all Jews. But if you seek to destroy Italy, you don't have to hate every Italian to be anti-Italian. If you seek to destroy the one Jewish state, you don't have to hate every Jew to be an anti-Semite. See, look at that nice equivocacy there. Italian, to be anti-Italian. You can be anti-Italian state without hating the Italian people. So the equivalent argument here would be, if you seek to destroy Israel, you don't have to hate every Jew to be anti-Israeli. To be an anti-Semite. But he puts in anti-Semite instead. No arguments here. Truly, the neocon cuck lord coming in with his throbbing three and a half incher to destroy America and Israel because, and I guess the Jewish people as well, um, because Dennis Prager doesn't give a fuck about Jews. Zionists don't give a shit about Jews um, because this, like, uh, I mean, you know, Netanyahu, the prime minister for um, the prime minister for uh, for Israel, recently indicted, by the way, huge bribery scandal, is a Holocaust revisionist. Did you know that? Prime minister of Israel is a Holocaust revisionist. Um, he's actually argued uh, that, um, he's actually argued, yeah, yeah, you guys know this. He's actually argued, in addition to all of his genocidal talk and what have you, he said that it wasn't Hitler's idea to engage in the final solution or the Germans or whatever. It was actually the sneaky, pernicious Arab allies he had who convinced him to destroy the nefarious Jew. That way, Netanyahu can transfer the cultural hatred of the Holocaust from Germany, which is now fine, to the Arab world, which is what Israel is currently opposed to, broadly speaking. Uh, it's a way of misdirecting the antagonism of the, of the atrocity, historically. 
Yeah, he's attempted to to uh, to spread the revisionism as well. He's a truly disgusting human being, Netanyahu, and an anti-Semite. There's nothing let. There's nothing more anti-Semitic than Holocaust revisionism for political clout. That's pretty. That's pretty fucking up there. Um, and to cap it all off, this video has been. Whew, hardcore brigaded by Nazis. Hey, how many of these Nazis, we can go over some of these, how many of these Nazis do you think regularly watch and enjoy PragerU videos, but just got mad because this one is pro-Zionist? Imagine sending billions of dollars subsidizing Italy's tomato farms. To find who rules over you, Google Jared Kushner from Socrates. Oops, we blew up your ship. That's the USS Liberty. Oops, we stole state, state secrets. Oops, we did it again. And again, oops, we stole your missiles. Oops, broke our... See, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's the Nazi stuff. Remember when the US didn't have to deal with Jews or with Jewish agendas at all? But sir, it's an American ship. Never mind, hit her. Prager, your doublespeak is falling on deaf ears. That's true, at least. The redacted cries out in pain as he strikes you. I'll say the same thing about Israel as I do Pakistan, and that is America first. To find out who rules over you, buy Mel Gibson a drink. You basically get the gist of this. It's all Nazis. But the question is, how many of these Nazis are brigaders, and how many of them do you think enjoy Pregu's videos normally, when they're doing stuff like making fun of liberals or trans people or saying that gay people are stupid or whatever, or when they're saying the importance of the military? That's the question. How many of them are brigaders and how many of them are usually fans of PragerU? I have no fucking idea. Check other PragerU video ratios. Oh, they're usually like 95% positive. Do we have unironic anti-Semites in chat right now? Are you guys beefing with me right now? Do we got any for real anti-Semites in here? You know, I'm an anti-Zionist because I'm pro-Semitic. There is no greater threat to the Jewish people, broadly speaking, than them being exploited and used by these plutocrats who will use the, um, the, the claims of anti-Semitism to further their business interests, which is exactly what people with Ben Shapiro or Dennis Prager do. It's all just fascist power games to them, but they don't care about the Jews. Why do you think Israel is discriminatory towards its non-white Jews? Why do you think they face uh, discrimination the darker their skin is? They're obviously not looking for Jews. They're looking to recreate the same old power hierarchies that they used to be on the bottom of. There was someone talking about the uh, USS Liberty. Oh, okay. Get the fuck out of here. You people are unironically disgusting to me. You realize that every hierarchy that exists in Israel is multiplied a thousandfold by hegemonic white Protestants here in America, right? For all I complain about Israel and its blatant hypocrisies and its overt fascism, you and the people you stand for are a thousand times worse. Ah, based, criticizing Israel. Why is he criticizing Israel? Because it's racist and exclusionary and itself anti-Semitic and fascist and because it treats people who are non-white worse and because it doesn't fairly discriminate um, uh, housing and uh, legal rights? Oh, oh, well, I didn't like them because there were Jews there. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh.